This video will tell you all you need to know about mutual funds. Before we begin, please note that mutual funds are subject to market risks. And make sure to read all the scheme related documents carefully. Furthermore, the video content has been made for informational and educational purposes only. Nothing contained in this video shall constitute or be deemed to constitute an advice. Always seek the advice of a professional with any questions you may have regarding your financial decisions. Before we get started, here's a brief on what we'll, we will be discussing today. Types of mutual fund schemes, fund categorization and its importance, international mutual funds. Mutual fund schemes come in various types. They can broadly be classified on the basis of the asset classes that they invest in, the mode of investment, their liquidity and their cash flows. On the basis of assets, the types of fund include equity that invests in shares, debt that invests in bonds, gold that invests in gold and hybrid that invests in a mix of these asset classes. When an investor goes through a distributor, he invests through the regular mode. Whereas an investor who invests through the AMC opts for the direct plan. Open-ended schemes are flexible and liquid, allowing investors to scale up investments or scale down positions at any point. A closed-ended fund accepts investments only during the new fund offering or NFO period. Most closed-ended schemes must be held to maturity. While the units are listed on an exchange, they are traded less frequently. Some mutual fund schemes offer a dividend option where dividends are paid out of realized gains. This creates a cash flow for the investor and these dividends are not guaranteed and cannot be regular. In the growth option, profits are accumulated and allowed to compound. Now we'll talk about categorization. Prior to 2018, mutual fund categories were very flexible. The consequence was that categories were not transparent. Within one fund house, multiple schemes had similar portfolios and it also became difficult to compare funds within one category as their mandates across fund houses were very diverse. This made it easier for investors to choose unsuitable funds and the ultimate purpose of categories is to be investor friendly. In 2018, SEBI recategorized mutual funds into five broad categories. These were equity, hybrid, debt, solution oriented and other schemes. It also redefined market capitalization of stocks. It said that the first 100 stocks would be, by market capitalization would be classified as large cap, the next 150 as mid cap and the remaining would be small cap stocks. SEBI also insisted that each AMC had only one scheme in each category, except in the case of index funds, ETFs, sectoral and thematic funds, and fund of fund schemes. Now we look at the categories of equity funds. Per SEBI's definition of market capitalization, equity mutual funds could be split into large cap, large and mid cap, mid cap, and small cap funds where they predominantly invest in the stocks as the fund name. A multi-cap fund invests across market capitalizations. That is, it would have a mix of large cap stocks, mid cap stocks, as well as small cap stocks in its portfolio. Equity funds could also be classified based on the style of investing. For instance, a dividend yield fund would focus on investing predominantly in stocks that have a high dividend yield. Whereas a value fund follows the philosophy of value investing, where it looks at sectors that are undervalued. A contra fund looks at contrarian opportunities. A focused fund has a maximum of 30 stocks in that portfolio. Sectoral funds look at a particular sector, such as pharma or technology, and invest into that. An ELSS or equity linked saving scheme is a tax saving mutual fund whose mandate is to invest at least 80% in equity. Debt funds can be classified on the basis of duration. 
short term funds are those that have a maturity from one night to about 3 years an overnight fund is uh, has a maturity less than a day whereas liquid funds have a maturity of less than 3 months ultra short funds have a duration ranging between 3 to 6 months whereas low duration funds have a duration between 6 to 12 months money market instruments are those that mature within a year and a money market fund could have a more flexible duration ranging from say a liquid fund until a low duration fund when we look at a longer duration you have medium term funds whose duration ranges between 3 to 4 years medium to long term funds whose duration ranges between 4 to 7 years and long term funds whose duration is more than 7 years a dynamic bond fund has the flexibility to invest across durations and could look like a short term fund at some point or a long term fund at a different point in the interest rate cycle debt funds could also be classified in a different way you have corporate bond funds that invest in high quality corporate debt you have credit risk funds that invest in lower quality corporate debt compared to a corporate bond fund then you have floating rate funds that have a floating component to the interest that the bonds earn you have banking and psu debt funds banks and psus are considered to be the safest borrowers in the credit market and typically a banking and psu debt fund offers high quality debt then you have gilt funds that invest in government securities and you have gilt funds with constant duration so here the duration of the gilt fund is held constant next we have hybrid schemes hybrid essentially means that it invests at least in two cl- asset classes when we look at conservative balanced aggressive and dynamic asset allocation funds the composition is predominantly into equity or debt and the bal- uh, the proportion between equity and debt changes according to the fund type in a dynamic asset allocation fund this is managed according to the market cycle then you have multi asset allocation funds where the investment is in at least three asset classes arbitrage funds take advantage of the prices between the spot and future markets and equity savings fund typically have a component which is in arbitrage and debt other ways to categorize mutual funds are solution oriented so you could have specific funds for children and for retirement purposes you also have fund of funds which instead of a fund investing in securities it invests in other mutual funds index funds mirror different indices and etfs are exchange traded funds now why is categorization important categories are important because they improve transparency and can help investors select the right funds it also makes it easier to compare funds and create a clear structure for schemes to operate on it also makes it easier to assess product suitability for every investor another interesting space is international mutual funds there are several factors to consider with international investments the first is that it requires continuous monitoring on both the domestic and international level there is currency risk involved because you are investing in inr into another geography or a currency and you might need the money back in inr or you might need it in the currency that you are investing in you also benefit with geographic diversification at the portfolio level the lrs scheme allows for a maximum of 250000 us dollars per resident to be invested each year abroad 